probably the first thing that you thought about when wanting to do this film and honor her was, of course, her trademark look, you know, and even it's used in the trailer, like my eyelashes are, that's my trademark. And if I take my trademark, trademark away, it's not me. Like there is a specific look, but it's done so well and it's not, um, it's not like its own character in the movie or something. Do you know what I mean? Like it's done so respectfully of who she is or how she looked or what this look meant to her, but it probably was a fine line of trying to figure out how do we, how do we do the look of Tammy Faye and how does it look on camera and in certain situations as addiction takes over, as other things take over without making it right garish or whatever else? And I'm just so curious about what your philosophy was for the look of Tammy Faye. Uh, I, you know, in the beginning I thought, oh, sure, prosthetics, no problem. Like, let's do it. <laughs> and then after the first session, I thought this is really a scary thing. This is going to be... It's, it was so draining in terms of energy. I was nervous about how am I going to act through it. We tried it once after we did the test with the prosthetics. We, t- we did one test with no prosthetics with just me wearing makeup. It didn't feel right, especially with the journey we have to make because the movie covers so many years. And I finally, I just had to surrender. It just became a moment of I'm sitting in the chair. Like, what's the positive side of this? I get to now have three or four or five or seven hours, depending on the day. Wow. Listening to her voice and watching her interviews because the documentary filmmakers gave me hundreds of hours of unused footage that I, I've watched all of probably three or four times. I mean, I've watched everything I get my hands on. And I think it's because of that time. Um, but also in like exploring it, it's funny. I, I worked on this part, you know, it was like seven years since when I bought the documentary till we ended up on set. And it changes. Like in the beginning, I thought it's the woman behind the mask. So here's the mask. Now, who is she behind it? And the more I started to learn about her and like RuPaul narrates the documentary and and what Ru says about drag is that it's not a mask. It's a revealing. And that something clicked into me when I was playing her that she's not covering up. She's using makeup as an expression of who she authentically individual, you know, the uniqueness of her, how she feels on the inside. And everyone through, you know, everyone tries to shame her about that. They tried to tell her to be more small or quiet or disappear. And she, every time they do that, she gets bigger and wilder with her makeup to the point that she tattoos it on her face. And to me, I saw that as a, as an act of showing the public that no matter what she was going to take up space in this world and no one was ever going to erase her. And that's kind of that working with the beautiful makeup artist. It, it, for me, it was like the key that unlocked everything. 